What is going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. It's been a while since I last put out a video, so I hope you guys do enjoy these more frequent music video tutorials. And if you guys do, please comment down below any other video ideas that you guys want to see on the channel. All right, so this first one is very easy to do. All you gotta do is have two clips in the timeline. The first one here is gonna be our first clip. So if I push play, it's going to look like that. I of course had to blur out some things because um, you know, YouTube, <laughs> but uh, if I push play, it's going to look like this and then the next shot is where we want to actually have our clip and then it's going to transition to our main clip which is this one here so what i want to do is whatever clip you have in front of this one here say we want to use this as our transition at this frame at the beginning we're going to go at the top we're going to go to edit we're going to go down to add freeze frame and then you're going to zoom out of the timeline and you're going to select the clip if I push play, it's going to look like a still image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the end of that clip and we're gonna trim it down to a certain length, depending how long you want this transition to last. I want it to be relatively quick, perfect. So now once we have this clip here, we're gonna go over to the effects. I'm gonna go down to the masks, go to draw mask and drag that onto the clip that you just created for the freeze frame. Doesn't matter where you have the time head, just make your selection. Ideally, you want this to be as precise as possible. So zoom in if you have to and move around with this little hand. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna just make our first selection, click once and then click again. And if you wanna make a curve, click and drag to um, create a curve. So I'm gonna do something like this. And if you wanna move this handle, just click and drag. Uh, make sure you hold option and this will allow you to just move this single point. When you're ready, you're going to hit the first point that we just created to finish the path. What I like to do is I like to click in between these two points, so at the bottom here, and I click and drag to move that whole entire line down so you don't have a gap in between the video and the frame. So we're then going to zoom out to fit. And if I go over to the inspector tab and I click off of the draw mask, you're going to see what it looks like. Go into this uh, one of the points and just move them inwards to each other. You might have to zoom in to like 200% and adjust those. All we have to do now is drag our fire clip, whatever you want to use beneath the freeze frame. So I just went on to Pixels. Video is not sponsored by the way, but I'll have this video linked in the description in case you want to use it. Just click and drag this below your freeze frame, trim it down to an area where you want to use the clip as the background. And I'm gonna have to scale this up quite a bit here. Uh, be mindful of the resolution by the way. So if you're using 4K, you know, try to go for 4K video. So I'm gonna go about here, that looks good. And now if I push play, it'll look something like this. Now, if you think that's too slow, just bring in the freeze frame clip inwards like that. And if I push play, it'll go by a little bit quicker. That's gonna be the first one here. Very easy to do. Let's move on to the second transition. All right, guys, so this second transition is honestly one of my favorite ones from this list, and it's going to be the wiggle wiggle transition. So if I push play, it's going to look just like this, super clean, very simple to do. But anyways, what you wanna do is go over to the first clip, and you're gonna go over to the effects, go down to distortion underwater and drag that onto the first clip. And then from here, what you wanna do is go over to the inspector tab, go to underwater, and then you're gonna move this playhead to the end of the first clip, go eight frames to the left. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, using the left arrow key on the keyboard. And then under size, you're gonna type in four. Under speed, you're gonna type in 50. And under refraction, you're gonna type in 100. Press enter, and then under mix, we're gonna leave that at 100%. From here, we're gonna add keyframes to all of this. So go and add a keyframe next to size, next to speed, next to refraction, and next to mix. So once you have keyframes on all of these points on the eighth frame here, you're gonna go one frame to the left here, and you're gonna move the mix all the way to the left at zero. Uh, the reason we do this is so that it doesn't add the effect to the rest of the clip from this area. So if I push play, it's going to look like this and you're not, you're not gonna add any keyframes at the end. But on the second clip here, you're gonna go and add the same underwater effect. So go over to effects, distortion, underwater and drag that onto the second clip. And then from here, what you want to do is go and type in the same exact value. So type in four, type in 50 for the speed, 100 for refraction and keep 100% on under mix but then you're gonna add a keyframe. So add a keyframe to everything here. 
and then you're gonna go eight frames over to the right. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the eighth frame here, what you're going to do is go to refraction and you're gonna drag this all the way to the left. So from the from eight frames, it's going to gradually decrease to zero. So that way it doesn't add any of the wiggle kind of wavy effect. So now if I go and I push play, it'll look just like this, super clean and smooth. Let's move on to the third transition. All right guys, so this third transition is another really cool one and this is going to be the super eight millimeter kind of overlay transition. Now, uh, the video that I'm gonna be using here is gonna be in the description as always. It is free to use, so just letting you know. But if I push play, this is what we're gonna be creating. Of course, the original uh, inspiration is taken from K Glock PSA. Link in the description. If I push play, it's going to look like this. And man, this one's super cool. Again, as always, have two clips in the timeline or as many clips as you want. Drag this clip here that I, you guys can find in the description, super eight millimeter. But at the beginning here, you're gonna see that you can actually clip or cut this and use it on your own. So if you just drag this above your media here, we're gonna use this uh, first bit here to create our transition. So I'm gonna go about, um, about here, I'm gonna press Command B to split this top clip. We don't need the rest, so I'm gonna press uh, Delete. And uh, from here, if I push play, you're gonna notice that if we just push play, it's just going to cut to this clip here. So we have to change the blend mode. So first, we're gonna go over to blend mode in the inspector tab, and we're gonna change it from normal down to screen or lighten. Ideally though, you want this to be covered, so we're gonna go with lighten. So this looks pretty good. So now if I push play, it's gonna look like this. Now this looks really cool, but we don't want it to start off very harsh like this. So we're gonna have to flip the video. And to do that, we're gonna go over to, once you have your clip selected, you're gonna hit this little speedometer icon, hit the down arrow, and you're gonna hit the reverse clip. So hit this, and this will flip the video or reverse the clip. So now that it's playing backwards. So if I push play, it's gonna come in a lot smoother. Now from here, we can then extend this out and go about here and see if this looks good. So play around with this. I'm gonna to go to where this starts to cut. So the uh, main clip, which is here, this white area has to cover the two clips underneath. So I think here is fine. Now the beginning is still coming in a little harsh so we can easily fade that in by going over to the actual transitions tab going over to dissolve, cross dissolve, I think cross dissolve looks better. Drag that on here, delete the end, and then make this super short here. Uh, I think this looks good there. And then from here, all you gotta do now is make a copy. So we still need this to end smoothly. So we're gonna hold option, drag the clip over to the right. And from here, we have to then flip the clip. So we're gonna select the clip, you're gonna go back to the speedometer icon. You're gonna go down to reverse clip. So now that it's playing as a normal clip, I should say. So if I push play now, it's going to look just like that. So that's all you gotta do. So it literally takes no more than, you know, a minute or two, so. All right guys, so this fifth transition is another really, really cool one and it's a smooth transition. This is gonna be kind of like a whip blur transition. So if I push play, it's going to look something like this. At the beginning of this clip, this is where you're gonna actually have the beginning freeze frame. So whatever is at the beginning here is what's going to be used as the transition. So go over to edit, add freeze frame, and you're gonna zoom out because Final Cut Pro likes to make the freeze frames really long. So just trim this down and drag this directly above. Then you're gonna move this over to the left and you're gonna trim the remaining of that clip to the uh, beginning of this first clip or the end of this clip here. Uh, so now if I push play, it should look something like this. Now this top clip is how long you want this transition to last. So if you want it to last a lot longer, extend the clip. If you want it to go really fast, make it very short. I'm gonna go about, I don't know, halfway. So maybe a couple of frames, maybe 10-ish or so frames. And then from here, what you wanna do is simply go over to the effects, you're gonna go over to the masks, you're gonna to go to the draw mask and you're gonna add that onto the freeze frame clip. And then you're gonna to have to make a selection. I'm gonna go a little bit quickly on this one just to show you uh, that this one doesn't have to be 100% exact because the following clip is just going to mask whatever is that we're creating on the edge so that you can't see any of the mistakes. But ideally you want the 
uh, these points to be pretty accurate, but go and click on the first one to finish the path. I always like to click in between these two red lines and drag it down so we don't have a gap like this. So just drag it down and it should now look something like this. Cool, so now uh, you're gonna notice if I push play, it's gonna go by pretty quick, but we want to make this a lot smoother on the edges. So go over to the inspector tab, click off of it, and you can see the edges now. So if we go over to the feather, you can feather this outwards or to the left, increase the feather inwards a little bit. So it fades the edges a little bit, so it's a bit smoother. So once we're there and once we're happy with the feather a little bit, we're going to now add a effect called, it's called Funhouse. So go over to Effects, Distortion, and Funhouse, and drag that onto our clip here. Then what you're gonna do is, going to look kind of funny, but uh, you're gonna have this on-screen control, which actually allows you to move this point to anywhere on the clip here. So we're gonna drag the amount all the way to 100, and we're just gonna drag this all the way to the left so we don't uh, warp any of our subjects. So move it completely out of the frame until you don't move uh, or shift the freeze frame. So drag it over to the top left. And then you're gonna go to the beginning here. You're gonna add a keyframe under amount next to angle and center as well. Then you're gonna go all the way to the second to last keyframe. And you're actually gonna drag this all the way over to the right, so to the bottom right. Or wherever you guys want to you know, move this, you can experiment and see what kind of effects you can create. You can also change the angle too. But uh, I think this looks good. So now, if we go back and push play, it'll look just like this. Now, it looks really good, but we can make this a lot better. So we're gonna go over to the effects, we're gonna go to the blur, and we're gonna go to directional blur. Click and drag this onto the clip, and then under the inspector tab, you're going to add a couple of keyframes. So move the playhead at the beginning. The amount, we're gonna start this off at zero, and we're gonna add a keyframe next to amount and angle. Then you're gonna go frame by frame, and as soon as it starts to move, just click and drag this arrow over to the right. Just follow the path of the first fun house that you did. So we're gonna go press right on the arrow key again, and we're gonna make this like that. Again, right on the arrow uh, key. Keep pressing that until you get a pretty blurry um, kind of glitch effect almost. Press right on the arrow key again. We're gonna skip a couple of frames. And once it starts to go about here, we can start bringing this inwards a little bit because the speed is slowing down. And then from here, we can just bring it all the way down to zero. So perfect. So now if we go back and push play, it'll look just like this, super smooth. And you can, of course, add sound effects to this, maybe like a whip uh, sound effects or something like that, uh, or a whoosh sound effect could look uh, and sound pretty dope. So let me know what you think and let's move on to the next transition. All right guys, so this next transition is going to be the bullet last break transition, if that makes sense. So uh, it's going to look something like this. So if I push play, it'll just kind of flash as a bullet's hitting the so-called camera. So if I push play, it's going to look like that. If you want to get this clip here, I'll have it linked in the description so you guys can download it for free. I can't tell you how to download it because YouTube doesn't allow me to tell you that, but there's many ways to do it. Just Google it, it's very easy. So just download and drag it into your Final Cut Pro 10 timeline. And from here, if I zoom out to the full um, length, if I push play, it's going to look like this. It's really, really slow, so we're gonna make our cuts first. So we're gonna start it about here. We're gonna trim it down to about just before it starts. And now we got to scale this up. So we're gonna hit the transform tool, go over to the video inspector tab and under scale all, just bring up the scale just a little bit and click done. And then you're gonna press command R on your keyboard, go to the end and on this line here, just drag it inwards to increase the clip's speed. So now if I push play, we can preview what it looks like. I think it's too slow still, so I'm gonna drag it inwards to make it go by a lot quicker. But once we are there, we're just gonna click and drag this in between these two clips, uh, but just before it. So maybe not so that the clip goes over on the next clip, you want this to be just before it ends. So here is fine. I might wanna even make this go by a lot quicker as well. So now if I push play, it should look something like this. And then now we gotta, of course, add the keyer. So go over to the effects, go down to keying and add the keyer onto our clip. Perfect, so now it's going to look something like this. And if I push play, you can see it there. It's a little bit hard to see. So we're gonna go over to the color tab here 
and we're gonna go over to the exposure tab and you can bring this up. You can also increase the midtones and maybe the shadows a little bit so you can see the uh, bullets a little bit more. And we're gonna go about three frames is good and then go over to the inspector tab, go over to the color tab here where it says no corrections, click color board and then go to the exposure tab. You're gonna see the um, kind of plus button that means you can add a keyframe. So add a keyframe and then at the end of that clip, one frame to the left, you're actually going to increase the highlights and you're gonna increase the shadows almost to 100%, but not quite. So we can still see a little bit of the video just like that. And then now if we go back and push play, it'll look like this. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing to the next clip. So select the next clip and then do the same thing. Just add a color board correction or any other ones here that you like. Uh, and then you're gonna go over to the plus button to add a keyframe, and then you're gonna go to the highlights, which is this right here. Drag that all the way up, and you're gonna do the same thing for the shadows, so quite a bit like this. So just so it matches the left clip here. So if you press left and right, it should match. If not, make it so it matches. So increase the highlights, maybe even the shadows. And there you go, that's pretty spot on, maybe a little bit more. And then from there, what you're going to do is go three frames over to the right. So press one, two, three, and then you're gonna double click on the circles to get rid of the, you know, the, the settings we applied. So it just brings it back to 0%. And then now if we go back and we push play, it'll look just like that. And of course you can, you know, make it only, so it's only one bullet breaking here. You can just mask it out by going to effects, going down to masks, adding a draw mask, and then going back here to the inspector tab, selecting the draw mask, and then you're just going to select one of the bullets here. And now it's only going to mask that one glass break. And then you can also move this. So go over to the transform tool, move this to where the end of that item is, and then click done. Increase the scale quite a bit here and adjust the scale as needed. So probably make that quite big. And about here, it looks good. Click done. So now if I go back and push play, it'll look like that. This is a lot better in my opinion um, because it's, he's pretty close to the camera. So this would make more sense. All right, guys. So the last transition is going to be this really cool fanning money transition. So if I push play, it's going to look just like this. And believe it or not, I actually created this transition for you guys to use. It is a paid transition, however. So if you guys go down in the description and you guys go to my Selfie store, there's actually 20 different transitions just like this that you can overlay on your clips without having to do anything else. So let me show you how it works. So uh, this clip here is going to be the first one, which looks like that. And then the next one kind of goes to this next scene. So we wanna add a transition between these two. So a quick and easy way without adding any keyframes or doing really anything else. All you gotta do is once you guys purchase and download the uh, transitions pack, there's 20 different ones, you guys can select the fanning hundreds uh, clip. All you gotta do is drag this above your media. So this is footage that you overlay. You do not install this in Final Cut Pro or Premiere or any other editing program. You just import it as a normal clip and then you just drag it above your media and then you push play. Now, if you want it to go fast, press Command R, go to the end and just bring this in as a normal clip. Make sure that this is right in between their two clips right here. And then that's all you gotta do. So now if you go back and push play, it'll kind of transition just like that with the hundreds. And this looks super cool, perfect for this kind of money scene right over here. And you can use that as an item to transition like that. Check it out, you guys won't be disappointed. Uh, and I also have other packs available as well if you guys do decide on getting them. And if you guys do purchase a pack, you support the channel as well. Uh, it helps me keep going and making videos for you guys. Let me know what you guys think of this one and the rest down in the comment section. And I'll catch you on my next video. Peace out.